Hey, it's Tom from Search Metalworks, and in this week's video, we're going to do a post mortem on a failed uh, machining job. More often than not, when you see these YouTube videos, especially of uh, machine shops, um, you only see the successes, you only see the things that went right. Um, and I wanted to change that a little bit. Um, I want to talk about something that went really, really wrong on me this week. Um, I did a bit of a post-mortem and I'm, I'm uh, looking at ways to improve this and I figured out what I did wrong, you know, why, why it went wrong. And I want to take you through that and you know, give you an idea so you can be looking for these kinds of things if you're ever doing uh, work like this. So let's dive in. I'm going to move you over to where the, the bench is over here and we'll take a look at the part and we'll uh, talk about what, uh, what went right, what went wrong and uh, what we're going to do to improve on that. All right, I've got you looking now at a successful part. Um, I just had to make a bunch of these. Uh, this is actually made out of 304 stainless. And um, a few things about this particular part that were uh, good and bad. Um, so I've done a few things with it. Uh, I've tried using high feed mills. Uh, I originally was using a three quarter inch end mill uh, because it's got features on front and back right so the bottom side this is just lightning all right so we're just trying to we remove a bunch of material here but it's really just to make this a little bit lighter because it's heavy uh, i don't know exactly how heavy it is i didn't i didn't check uh so anyways start out with the three quarter inch end mill was really having problems with um chips chip buildup i switched to a three quarter inch end mill with chip breakers Worked very well for that other side. Um, want, but I, I eventually destroyed it, right? Um, I don't know if you can see it in the camera or not, but yeah, the, the ends took a beating on that one. Um, so I switched up. I did on this top side, I switched to a Harvey One uh, TE. So the four flute, um, often referred to, I think is the zombie mill. And this is it right here. I, on this particular part, I did it at the Kenametal factory recommended speeds. And so I started out, uh, it was running at two and a half thou per tooth at 260 surface feet per minute. Um, and it cut beautifully. In fact, I posted a, a little video of it on Instagram uh, running this particular part, running this cut, and it was beautiful. Um, it didn't sound like it was working very hard. So what did I do? Well, over time I started e inching up the feed rate, you know, feed rate override. And I got to a point where I was at, um, so at two and a half thou, this is a half inch cutter, that comes out to be 20 inches a minute. Well, I had it up to 30 inches a minute and it was still just cutting beautifully, right? Roughing all this out, cutting beautifully. I knew I had a lot more in it and so I changed my code to run it 40 inches a minute. And so that part of it um, was, you know, it was great. Everything worked fine. You know, I finished up this part. Um, I used the half inch rougher to come in and, uh, or sorry, a half inch ball mill to, uh, to clean up the floor. But I followed it up with a quarter inch to get this, um, because I've got a, a call out on the radius here. And so we use a quarter inch to, to clean that up. Now let's take a look. I'm going to reposition the camera and we're going to look at our, or I'll move these parts around and we'll, uh, we'll look at the one that failed. All right. So here's our failed one. And this one, yeah, it just gave me all kinds of headaches. Uh, so here's the one our, our, that failed. The, uh, as you can see down in here, it's all screwed up. So let's talk about what happened. Um, and then let's look at that uh, end mill. As you can see, it was not happy. It was a combination of events that um, that caused this. So I went back and I looked at my code because 40 inches a minute should have been fine. What happened was we actually lifted the part up uh, in the work holding. And in doing so, we, uh, 
we caused a couple of things. So the first part on this, not only did I increase that chip load, but I, I didn't realize when, uh, when I did it, it also increased the depth of cut. And um, because I noticed second time around, or that when it was doing that roughing uh, in the first, the first part that I did, that it did part of it, and then it came back and it did a bunch more. And I was like, what? I, was, I wasn't sure why it was doing that. So I changed the depth of cut because I didn't think it was going to cause a problem um, because this was, and, and the first part, you know, I mean, we were only going down three quarters of an inch, and the recommended, uh, the recommended uh, settings uh, for this thing was at three quarters of an inch, so 1.5D deep. So I thought, oh, well, I already had it set to that. It should be fine. It won't make a big deal. Well, here's what happened. When I was adjusting everything, it had already gotten past this heaviest part of the cut, the, the deepest part of the cut. So as I was adjusting things with my feed rate override, I was over here. I was only at a half inch depth of cut or less, or maybe, or maybe, maybe I was at five eighths, right? But Without thinking about it, I had already gotten past the heaviest of the cut, and that's when I was dialing things up and dialing it up. And um, yeah, so now I've got a lot more engagement on the flutes, um, and I'm pushing harder, and so that lifting action of the helix caused the part to lift. Um, I caught it, you know, I, I heard it break, I immediately stopped everything. I could see that I'd cut deep, but I didn't know how deep I'd actually cut. And so I thought, okay, well maybe, <laughs> maybe it'll buff out, maybe it'll clean up. So I swapped tools and I actually put in a corn cob rougher because I had a half inch um, Lakeshore uh, corn cob, cob rougher and I let it finish roughing and then I let it just finish everything. Uh, not only did, <laughs> did this break, but then my, my trusty uh, thread mill also broke. It looks like I got threads, but I don't know how I broke a thread mill. I've never in my life broken a thread mill. This part decided to just give me hell. So anyways, that was the big, the big part on this. Um, the other thing was work holding. Because I've got a flatness that I'm trying to, to, to maintain here, I, I didn't have a hell of a lot of strong work holding. In fact, I was using, so I'm using mod vices, right? Using these guys. And I was actually on the flat here uh, because I had it flat against the, um, the surface plate, not surface plate, the, the uh, fixture plate. Um, so, you know, I'd already machined those sides. They were a little slippery. It didn't have the strongest of, of holding. I think if I were clamping it stronger um, or using serrated teeth, it wouldn't have had that lifting problem. But because I had a weaker work holding, pushing it harder was not the right way to go. Um, it did unfortunately cut in too deep and I've got to make a new part. And I'm out about $600 in material costs too. All because I was trying to save myself an hour of machining time. Yeah, see how expensive uh, being in a hurry can be, huh? All right, so there you have it. We all make mistakes. You know, just because we're on YouTube doesn't mean we're perfect, right? Uh, everybody makes mistakes. This one really cut into my, uh, my profit margin, let me tell you. Um, but I gotta do the right thing. I did consider doing weld buildup and then remachining. Uh, I may still do that on this part, just as a fail safe, but for what this part does and what the customer is asking for, I don't feel comfortable doing that uh, and, and delivering that to them. Um, I, I want to make sure that everything is right. And so you know, I ordered more stock and we're going to try and get this one knocked out as quickly as we can, but as accurately as we can. So remember, work holding matters. Uh, if, I had, if I had actually... Um, changed my clamping method. So, and this is part of the things that I'm thinking about for how I'm gonna make this other part, is I'll hold it from those outsides while I'm doing the top part of the surfacing, but then once that's done, and once I get to a point where I have um, cleaned up the top and, uh, 
and I'm ready to go for other parts, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll, do the, I'll do the drill and thread milling. And then from there, I'm going to clamp from the top to hold it down. And I'll let it, uh, I'll let it go at that point. Um, so that should alleviate this, this problem. Plus, by clamping flat down, I should maintain that, uh, that flatness in there. So yeah, that's, that's it. But it's just things to think about. Um, kind of a, a tough, this is a, a tough video to make because uh, you know we all want to do things. You know, we all want to show that we're we're knocking these things out. We're we're doing it fast, and we never make mistakes, and everything's awesome. And I mean, it was awesome until it wasn't, right? So uh, yeah. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you uh, like what you saw today and you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. The vast majority of the folks who watch my videos aren't actually subscribed to my channel. Um, really helps beat uh, the computers at their own game if you do subscribe. And I'm hitting close to that 5,000 subscriber mark somehow. I, I don't know how we got to that point, but we are. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. All right. So we rarely often, or sorry, start that over. <laughs>